this is Spot. Um, I got him when I was a baby, and I've slept with him ever since. It was actually given to me by one of my childhood best friends who was born on the same day as me. She moved away in first grade and this was like a present that she gave to me on our last shared birthday party before she left. I wasn't gonna not bring him so I wasn't embarrassed about it but I think people, like now people like laugh. They come based off of this book called The Snowman. The big one I named Squishy and the small one I named Squashy and I, I don't know why I did that. I think it was a very kinesthetic response, maybe just like the physical way they feel. <laughs> I don't know, it's not a very creative choice. One time my sister and I, we got in a fight and she knew that Spot was like who I always went to when I was sad so she stole him and I was so upset and I went to go get Spot back and we were fighting over him and then that's when Spot ripped and my mom had to give him stitches. Blinky has Noah's Ark on it. Um, my grandma was really religious and she wanted us to grow up religious, but we didn't. But I've always appreciated all of the animals just because I love animals. At this point, he's pretty um, beat up and like his tail is all chewed because when I was a young child, I used to chew his tail. Some people kind of joke and say that that's gross, but to me, it's just a reminder of how much we've been through together. I love Buffy. <laughs> so I live in London and we used to drive to the country every weekend, every Friday. We would get in the car and we'd drive there for two hours and I was obviously really um, like jumpy and wanted to get there and was really excited. It was a tradition of my whole family to all get out of the car and scream as loud as we could because I was never allowed to be loud in London, but in the country I could do whatever I want, so I always think about that. Sometimes at school I have moments when I'm alone in my room and all I want is just to have my brothers run through the door yelling something. <laughs> Growing up, we would always get together to have dinner together and hang out and talk and do high-low funnies of our days around the table, and I really miss all being in the same place at the same time. My experience is so different here that nobody back home can really relate to it or understand it. Um, so when I try and explain like Stanford traditions or just like things that happen in American colleges, people don't really understand it. So it's sometimes quite hard to like feel like I can share my experience. You're kind of thrown into the sea and you're also thrown into a sea of people that really seem like they have it together. I'm like really acutely aware of running out of time. Stanford could just be a really overwhelming and like fast paced place that also makes you feel like you're growing up and you're going into the real world and you can be so independent here. I think that sometimes you have to have an ego in the sense that I think that you need to pretty quickly when you get to Stanford, like recognize what's unique about yourself and what you have to offer and decide kind of 
from the beginning that like that's gonna be good enough for you. My freshman year, I came in kind of intimidated that I was gonna be, you know, less talented, less interesting, less perfect than everyone else. A huge part of my Stanford experience has been finding out who I am and how I fit into the community and what, ma what that means for me going forward. It's okay to hold on to things from your past while you're growing and be who you want to be and like whenever you just feel a little bit down or like you can feel isolated like he's just a source of comfort. It's just nice to have him around all the time. Yeah, I can't believe how long I've had this. I love it.